Um, first, could you just tell me a little bit about yourself and why you had such a great interest in materials engineering? Okay. Um, um, I was interested in engineering when I was in high school and I looked into it as that was something I thought I would like to pursue in college and I guess at the time uh, in high school what do you know about you know about chemistry and physics engineering mm -hmm. you're told is something that people who are good in math and science like but you don't really know exactly what it is so I um, applied to engineering schools and I thought at first I would be in physics and by the end of the first semester of college physics I said hmm maybe I need something that's not as um, theoretical mm -hmm. and um, I attended MIT they had a number of open houses and for any student who wants to figure out what they want to do that's the best thing just go visit every department see what they have uh, to offer, take a tour of the labs. So I, I must have gone to like six different departments and the one department I visited was material science and um, it was a small department. It was nice to uh, see a department where there was a lot of attention paid to students and they showed me around the labs and I said, well I, I, I think this is it. This is kind of like physics but it's a little bit more applied. So I have to say I had no idea what it was until you know I was already um, into second semester of freshman year. But as I always say, you have to keep an open mind and and look around and try out things because you probably haven't heard of a lot of things. Even you know in the in other sciences, you haven't heard of them until you get to college. Mm -hmm. Was it easy for you to make the decision to go into a field that was? traditionally male dominated? Well I think a number of things had happened even up to that time. Um, when I was applying to schools there were many schools that admitted women students but didn't allow them in their engineering school and then of course there were many schools that didn't admit women at all um, and MIT always had women, a small number, but <laughs> they always had women and they uh, didn't bar them from any of the departments. So, um, you know, once I'd made that decision, it was a question of uh, picking a school. And yeah, I mean, in my freshman class, there were a thousand men and there were 70 women. So it was um, something I guess I expected at the time because I knew what the numbers were, were going to look like. What was that first year? like at MIT, being one of 70 women. Well, the, the, the thing about being 70 out of a thousand, um, it was, the way I described it as being invisible. Um, there weren't enough of us even for people to notice that we were there, mm -hmm. which in some ways is good because then, you know, you just go to your classes and you do what you have to do. Uh, but in other ways, it's, um, a little disturbing to realize that you know you're there in the class and people sort of act like you're not there at all. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was mostly a case of being invisible. Are there any specific times during that first year that you questioned whether or not engineering was right for you specifically because of ways that uh, male students treated you or professors treated you, things like that? There were definitely times when I went back to my dormitory and I was kind of puzzled, you know, like what did I do that caused that response? But uh, the the other thing I, I think was very important was that um, at the time there weren't co-ed dorms, so it was an all-women dorm. <laughs> and um, I made good friends among the women students from the very start. and just knowing that they were there for me and were experiencing the same things that I was experiencing meant if something seemed really peculiar I could always tell them. Um, and you know we would compare notes and I think uh, one of the things that we noticed was uh, if we walked into a room and there were uh, you know 40 seats in the room and 30 students in the room uh, one thing was guaranteed 
wherever the woman was sitting in the class, there were bound to be empty seats around her. So we always had plenty of room. Nobody ever bothered to sit down next to her. <laughs> it was one of those things where you sat down and the next person would be at least one seat over from that. Which, you know, you wondered, uh, did I take a bath today? What's the problem? But uh, it was just, at the same time being invisible, you were also sort of, I don't know what to do with you, so I have to stay away. <laughs> and um, we would all comment on that, how we you know, gotten through the many of our courses and never had to sit next to anybody. What did that in were you enabled to socialize with your male with your fellow male students outside of the classroom or did you were most of your friends the other female fine I think that uh you know there were many activities uh that um meant you were going to come into contact with the male students anyway. Um, and it's the usual high school things. So that wasn't unusual. I played in the uh, the orchestra in that way. I was in a group that had a, a, an assortment of people. So it had male students, female students, and then uh, musicians from other places around Boston. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I think people you know, interacted in the same way that they would in high school. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of interaction in the classes, though. Uh, I guess, you know, it was mostly that you met people in activities. Um, while you were in school, were you given the opportunity to work in a laboratory type setting with a professor? I, that was one of the things I'm really glad that I um, that I did that, and it took a little bit of, you know, I had to sort of um, build up my courage to walk up to the professor and say, do you have a summer job? Could I work in the lab? Um, and maybe other people had an easier time doing that, but uh, towards the end of my junior year, I said, you know, I'm just, I'm not going home. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stay on campus, and I just decided I had to do it and you know the professor said oh yeah by the way I have this great project and he told me about it and I thought it was terrific. Um, do you, did you have any female professors either in your science classes or your other humanities classes? I had some in humanities classes uh, none in any of the science or engineering classes um, and one of the things about the program I took, there was some flexibility. So I was able to take several art history classes and some um, German language classes, and that was mm -hmm. an opportunity to have female professors.